Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to paint clouds in watercolor using two different techniques. To start off, I'm going to be using two colors, ultramarine blue and an alizarin crimson. For brushes, I'm going to be using a number 2 round brush and two of my travel brushes in sizes 8 and 12. The first technique is called wet on dry, where we will apply paint to dry paper. To start off, I'm going to be sketching out the cloud and where I want the shadows to be. When you look at cloud references, notice where the sun hits the clouds is the brightest, and then there are varying shades of a darker blue the farther away the sun is. I would recommend using a reference for your first try so you can get a better feel of where these areas will go. Using my number 12 brush, my biggest brush, I will be creating a mixture of ultramarine blue and you want to have more pigment than water. You want the color to be really saturated. Starting at the top, I am working my way down and going around the area I want the cloud to be. Be sure to work fairly quickly so that the paint is still wet and doesn't dry in lines. Next I will be using my number 2 brush, which is my smallest brush. To make the color for the shadows, I am creating a mixture of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. You want to add just a tiny bit of alizarin, and also add a lot of water so it will be a really light color. Then I am painting the areas that there are shadows. Make sure this area is really light as we will build up the color in areas that are darker once it's dried. I recommend testing your colors on a piece of paper before you use it to make sure it's the color you want. Now I'm going in with that same color and placing it farther down in the shadow areas to create more depth. Make sure not to completely cover up your first layer of shadows as these different values help to add dimension. If it's ever too dark when you put it on the paper, use a paper towel to blot it off and it will lighten it.
here I am using my number 8 brush that is slightly damp with just water and rubbing lightly in a circular motion to slightly soften areas that looked a little too harsh for me. The next technique is wet on wet. First, I am lightly sketching out roughly where I want the clouds to be, and then with just water, dampening the entire paper. You want it to have a shine, but not have really big puddles anywhere. Then I am taking my ultramarine and painting the areas around the clouds. To add some perspective, note that as the clouds get farther away and closer to the horizon, they get smaller. Then I created a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson and while the paper is still wet, I will place this color on the bottoms of the clouds. While the paper is also still wet, you can use a paper towel to blot off areas that you want to make white again. I am then going back in with a darker mixture of the red and blue and once again place that at the bottom of the clouds. Now this part is optional, but I noticed once the paper was dry that the blue was just a little too light for me. So I went back in with my ultramarine and went around the clouds like in the wet on dry technique. I felt like it really helped make the clouds pop. If you do this step, make sure that as you go further down the paper, the sky gets lighter. So I didn't have much pigment on my brush closer to the horizon. The last one I will be showing you is how to paint clouds during a sunset. I sectioned off the paper and will be showing you the colors I will be using at the bottom. The first is ultramarine blue. Next was yellow ochre, but I actually ended up not using that color. Next is burnt sienna. And then lastly, new gamboge or any bright yellow. I made a circle for where I wanted the sun to go. Then I wet the whole paper like we did in the wet and wet technique. Then using ultramarine blue, I am doing the same technique and painting around where I want the clouds to go. Once I got two thirds of the way down, I switched to my bright yellow, and then at the very bottom, I used burnt sienna.
While the paper was still wet, I went in with my bright yellow and placed it on the bottoms of the clouds. This is going to be the area that the sun will be hitting. Then I went in with the burnt sienna and added a little bit of this color just above the yellow. Be sure when you're blending this out, be sure to go up and away from the yellow so you can still see it. Next, I created a mixture of ultramarine and scarlet lake, which is just a bright red, um, to mix a dark purple and place this above the burnt sienna areas. These are the areas that the sun isn't touching, so it's going to be especially dark. With this color, don't blend out any of these areas as they are the outlines of the clouds and you don't want them to blend into the sky and disappear. I'm also just adding some small clouds um, that are just dark purple. Next, I am creating a darker mixture of this blue and red and going above the purple I have already put down. I did end up going back in with the burnt sienna areas and making them slightly darker as well. And you're all finished! I hope you were able to learn a few things from this video and let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. Thanks so much for watching!